Hello everyone. The best way to learn something is learn by doing. So in this video, I will not only explain Azure AI Studio, but also show its components in the lab as well as create a mini project where we'll use the prompt flow, AI search, RAG, Python, as well as the web app. And once you're done with this video, then you will have a good understanding about the Azure AI Studio, as well as you will have the hands-on experience to use this information in your own projects. So let's start. Azure AI Studio is a unified platform where you can develop, deploy, as well as manage AI solutions. In AI Studio, you have tools from the different vendors, which you can use to create the workflows, which will help in creating the intelligent applications. Now, if I'll talk about the architecture of AI Studio. So whenever you start with the AI Studio, the first most important resource is the AI Hub. And AI Hub is the centralized resource, which is also called as the shared resource. So you have the data sets, connections, compute resources, as well as the security setup there. And all these resources in the AI Hub can be shared by the different projects. So now if I'll talk about the projects, so these projects are the different environment which are not integrated with the different project. So every project is a single entity. However, all these projects are integrated with the AI Hub resources. So the resources created, like the data sets, connections, compute resources created in the project cannot be used by another project but the resources in the hub can be used by all the different projects. Now AI Studio also provide the AI services too. So you can connect the different AI services. So these are the main AI capabilities which you can use in your projects or the applications. First one is the speech where you can do the text to speech or speech to text based on your application, language and translator, where you can use the features of analyze, summarize and translate. However, the third one, which is the most important is the vision and the document. In the vision and the document, you can scan the different images. And this capability is used by most of the organization where we have to scan the different images, receipts, invoices, and get the data out of it. I have worked in an organization, which was a healthcare organization, where there was a backend team who was checking all the receipts and getting the data out of it. Now this can be done using the AI where the AI service will scan all the images, get the data out of it. So introducing the AI vision and the document in your application or the process will increase the speed by many folds. And the final one is the content safety, where you can detect the harmful offensive and inappropriate language or AI generated content, or you can filter the personal content, which should not be visible. So in your application, which you will create using the different models in your project, you can use the AI services to make it more efficient. So now instead of showing the slides, I'll log into the lab and then create these resources and, and then show all the components of these AI hub as well as the AI project. I'm logged into Azure portal now and let's go to Azure AI Studio. I have already created different resources, which are Azure AI hub, services, project. So let's create a new one. Now there are two options. You can create a project as well as the hub. So I'll start with the hub. So first resource to create in the Azure AI Studio is the AI hub. So let's create a new resource group, RG Lab Studio. Let's choose Australia East. Let's name it as Shalender AUAE001. And as soon as you create a hub, you need to connect the AI services. So it will connect the AI services for you. You can name it based on your requirement or it will provide you the name by itself. Next storage account. Now you have to create a storage account where your data will be saved. So it's creating a new storage account and saving the credentials into the key vault. So I'm just selecting default. You can click on create new and provide the name based on your naming policy. So I'll go by the default, then comes the networking. There are multiple options using, so I can access is using the public endpoint or private with the internet in outbound or private with the approved outbound. So for now, I'm just keeping it public because I want to access these resources from my laptop. So encryption, we are not enabling the customer managed key and in identity, 
by default it will choose the system assigned managed identity and for the storage class I'm using the credential based access. Review and create and create. The deployment has started now. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the deployment finishes. It took around a minute or two and the resources are created now. So let's check what are the resources which are created. First it created a key vault and the storage account. So storage account is linked to Azure AI Studio where the data can be saved. And the credentials of the storage account are saved in the key vault. Then it created the workspace which is AI Hub and AI services. So if I'll go to resource group, there is a key vault, Azure AI hub, which is created, storage account and AI services is connected. So using AI services, as I've shown in the slide, there are different capabilities which you can use. Go to Azure AI hub, and there you will see that there's an option of launch AI studio. So let's launch the studio now. So I am in the Azure AI Studio. This is the hub overview where you can see different projects. What are the connected resources? So there are different connections which are created for Azure OpenAI and AI services. And you can manage your subscription quota from here or you can go to the Azure portal from here itself. If we'll click on all projects, you can see all the projects which are created with this hub. Right now there is no project which I have created. So let's go to the model catalog. So now this is the main benefit of using the Azure AI Studio because you get the tools from the different vendors itself. So if you look at the collections, so you get Azure OpenAI from the Meta, from Mistral, NVIDIA. If we'll click on industries, different industries. And the main one is inference task. So you can create the text generation, fill mask, text classification, text to text generation. However, the important one is the chat completion, which we are using nowadays. Everywhere you see the chat GPT or Google Gemini. So all these are chat completion. And there are different deployment methods, manage compute, where where you have to manage the virtual machine if any of this model is deployed. However, in the case of the serverless API, so these models will be running on the virtual machine managed by Microsoft itself. And when you're not using that model, then the Microsoft will shut down those virtual machines. And so the benefit is when you're not using these models, you will not be charged for them. So now there are a lot of models, 1804. Now how to choose one of them? And there comes the model benchmarks. So Microsoft has created benchmark for these models and using which you can decide which model to use. So the first one is model accuracy. So how accurate your model is. So you can see which models and their accuracy. Model coherence, how logical their output is. Is it making sense? Is it more natural? Then the groundedness, can the information provided by the model be verified easily? And based on the fluency, does it look more natural or not? Or the relevance, whether whatever you asked, whether it providing the relevant output or not. So based on that, these this is the metrics which is created and the similarity. And finally, you can see all this here. So GPT-40 has the highest accuracy and coherence is good and all these details are available here. So now based on your requirement, you can choose the models. However, there is a slight difference, but there is a difference in the price. So if a little bit of accuracy is not a problem for you, then you can go for the lower versions. But if you want your application to be accurate and there is no limitation of the cost, then you can go with the latest model. So based on this comparison, you can decide which model you can use. Now comes the prompt catalog. Prompt for the chat completion is very important because you need to define the boundaries or you need to define how your bot will work. Uh, let's take an example. Hiking recommendation chatbot. 
So these are tested by Microsoft. So I am a hiking enthusiast named Forrest. I introduce myself when first saying hello. So you have to define as soon as you open the chat playground or as soon as you open the chat, it should say hello and help out the people based on where they are located, what hiking intensity they're looking for and then provide your recommendation. First get these inputs and then provide the recommendation. So you can tune in your chat bot. So based on that, they will work. So this is the system message which we'll use in the chat playground as well as our application. So these are the different prompts which are available, which you can use. However, I'll recommend to use the prompt in the playground, which I'll show you soon and then create an application based on that prompt. Now the AI services, which we have already discussed, these are the different AI capabilities which you can use in your application. Now comes the playground. So this is the chat playground. It's similar to like chat GPT. If you create a deployment right now, there is no deployment. If you create a deployment based on the specific model, then you can chat and you can give the model instructions and context, which is the system message. So whatever system message you will provide, your chatbot will work according to that. So provide your information according to that. Now there are different playgrounds available. One for assistant, another one for speech where you can try text to speech and speech to text or the real time transcription, batch transcription, all this can be tried here. Now another, another shared resource is the deployment where you can deploy the different model. So now if you'll deploy the model, it can be used in the hub as well as the different projects. And if we'll go to the connections. So right now there are two connections created, one for Azure OpenAI as well as the Azure AI service, but you can create different connections like for the storage account or any other service which you want to use. Then the compute instances, where you can create the different compute instances as well as the serverless instances where your models will be deployed. And then the users, you can manage the users from here and the content filters. Content filter is for safety. So if we we'll click on the content filters, select the connection. I'm not creating one, but I'll just show you. So there is a violence filter, hate, sexual and self-harm. So your chatbot should not provide all these. So based on that, whether it's text and image, and what level of threshold you want to set it up, you can set it up from here. And once the content filters are created here and it will be applied to all the projects. However, you don't need to worry much, have their content filtering already enabled. But this is one of the way where you can allow or block specific content above the content safety of your model. So let's go to the projects and create a new project. Let's name it as Shalender project 01 create. So the project is created now. If I'll click on the project. So now these are the project properties where it's showing the hub name and the hub resource name, what subscription, what are the different project users. On the left side, it shows the same information like model catalog, model benchmarks, AI services. But if we'll check in the playground, now there are more options to test. You, previously there was only chat, assistants, as well as speech. Now there are images, completions, real-time audio and healthcare, which you can test in your environment before deploying the application using them. So now there is a code which you can create, prompt flow, evaluation, fine tuning, using the data indexes, and there are multiple components where you will save your data, where you can create your search service like indexes and then the deploy the resources and content filtering. So let's go to the deployment and deploy the model because first I want to test my model chat completion model in the chat playground. So deploy a base model. Now in the deployment, first I want to choose the serverless API. And as I've already told, the reason is I don't want to manage the underlying virtual machine as well as, and I don't want to pay the charges when I'm not using my model. So now there are different models which are available. The overview and mini, they are locked for now. 
and you need a registration for that. So these are the different model. So I'll just choose chat completion 32 GPT-4 and let's see if it's available. Click on it. It's standard. It's available in Australia East and let's try to customize it. So if I'll go down, if I want to increase the token per minute, which is 8K is pretty decent when I'm testing something, but in the real time scenario, you need to increase your quota for the subscription. So let's deploy this. Now a GPT-4 model is deployed. You can open in the playground or let's go to the playground, specifically chat. And it's selected because we have deployed only single model. So let's start chatting. Where can I buy bus tickets in Melbourne? I'm based out of Melbourne. So you can buy Mikey cards online and all those details. If you'll see on the left side, in the model instructions and context, you are an assistant which helps people. So there is no specific information or the system message which is restricting this model. So let's create a system prompt. You are an AI assistant that only provides information on real estate. Apply changes. And let's try this question again. Where can I buy the bus tickets? But now this time it didn't provide the information. So you can restrict your chat application or your model to provide the specific information only. So now I'm sorry about any confusion, but as a real estate focused AI, I don't provide information on transportation. But if you'll ask about where can I buy house in Melbourne? It'll provide you suggestions because it's a real estate agent now. So these are the different suggestions he is providing. Go to these off plans and all those suggestions. And you can add more restrictions and be more specific. Only provide, only provide information for Melbourne city. And keep your answer short and concise. So let's apply these changes. What is the average housing cost in Sydney? And again, because I've limited it for the Melbourne city, so it's just providing me the information on the Melbourne. So that's how you can tune your chat playground. You have to keep trying your multiple prompts and design a system prompt so that your application or your chatbot works according to your requirement. So now there is an option to deploy this. So if you we'll deploy it as a web app, the same chat application using, using the GPT-4 model will be deployed into the web app and you can use the same features there. But we don't want to do that. We'll create a proper project on that and where we'll understand about the prompt flow. So prompt flow is a different flow where there are different types, standard flow, chat flow and evaluation flow. However, the most important is the standard flow where you can use the large language model, Python code, as well as the different tool sets so that you can tailor your prompt flow. And finally, you can deploy the endpoint and use that endpoint in any web app. So now to understand it better, I will create a mini project. So let me provide you details about this project. So in this project, we'll have some documentation. So this will be kind of an internal project specific for an organization where there are some documents. So those documents will be uploaded in the storage account. Now we'll use the AI search and indexing service where we'll index all those documents and break it into different chunks. This is how the AI service consume the data. And once that is done, 
we'll apply the Python filtering so that the output which comes from the AI service have more filtering so that we don't utilize more tokens in the LLM which will use the GPT model. And finally that will provide an output to us. So now initially we'll ask some question and using the AI search and index which ran on the storage account we'll get some answers. Now those answers will be filtered using the Python. And once the filtering is done, it will be sent to the LLM where it will design a proper answer and make it a human response and then provide us the output. So we'll create this using the prompt flow. So in this mini project, we'll be using the GPT model for the LLM. Then we'll use the Python filtering rag, which is retrieval augmented generation where we are training the LLM on our private data. And once this project is created, we'll deploy an endpoint for it because we don't want to use it in the chat playground. We want to provide a web application which can be used by the users so that internally, if they want to find some information, they can use it. And once the endpoint is deployed, then we'll test the whole project using the Python web app. And once you have deployed this project, you will have a good understanding of the advanced AI topics. So let's start in the lab. I went to Azure AI Studio and let's go to our project and let's go to the prompt flow. So if we'll go to the prompt flow, create a new prompt and create a standard flow. So let's name this as RAG application. So the prompt flow is created where if we'll check on the right side, it's showing that there is an input, there is an LLM, as you can see here, there's a system prompt and the user prompt, and it's all about the jokes. So we'll create our own LLM. So let's delete this. And the another one is the echo for the Python. We'll use the Python, but when required, so delete this step two. So now we have input as well as the output. And before this, because we want to add the more tools, we need to start the compute session. So start the compute session. It takes around one to three minutes. So let's wait for it. Compute session is running now. As you can see, it's a serverless VM size is provided and it's running. So let's quickly save this, the changes which we have done and go back to our AI hub which is shell in the AUAE 001. And if we'll go to compute instances in the serverless instance, you will see that this is the compute instance which is running. So let's go back to our project and in the prompt flow, drag application. So this is the workflow. Now you can see as soon as the compute session is started, we can see the more tools. Now what we want is index lookup. So let's create an index lookup shell in the index 01, add it. Now for this index to work, we need index type and all those details, but there are no index path, index details are not there. So let's cancel it. And now we have to create an index, but for creating index, we need to create an index on something, which is data. So I have two documents. One is real estate guide for buyers and sellers for Victoria, Australia, which is a long document, which provides the real estate information. And another one is the Vic road handbook. So it is a document from where you provide the driving test. So you learn all the details of the driving from here. So this is for Victoria, Australia too. These two documents are available publicly. But I'm just making a scenario where these two documents are your IP specific to your organization. And now you want all the users in your organization to get the information from these documents. So now we need to upload these documents in the storage account. So first on the left side, go to the components and go to the data. Confirm this, save it, new data. So there are multiple options. You can use the Azure Blob storage account. However, I'll just upload the data here because 
AI Studio has a storage account in the backend and it will use that storage account to save the data. We can though create new connections, add more storage account, but we'll use the same one. Upload files. I'll choose both the files and upload them. These are pretty decent sized files with around 100 pages. So this is the information on which we are training our LLM. So next, let's name this data as internal data 01 create. Now it is created. Those two files are uploaded. Now we need to create an AI search service on this index. So let's go to indexes, create a new index. And there are multiple options. You can use the blob storage account, storage URL, upload files again, but we have already uploaded data in Azure AI studio. So if we'll click here, I can see the data here. But now, as you can see here, there is a create new Azure AI search resource. Let's click here. Let's create a new resource, which we'll use. So I'll use the same resource group, which is lab studio, name the service as shell in the lab AI search, search zero one. And I'll use Australia East as the region. And we don't want to create multiple indexes. We'll just create a single one. So free tier is fine for me. And next is scaling. So it's a single one. So it doesn't matter. And review and create and create. There is some issue. Let me check what the error is. Actually the error is that free tier is already in use. Oh, I have used in another project. So let me quickly change it to basic. So now review and create and create. Now Azure AI service is created. The next is we need to create an index where we'll use the same Azure AI service. It's deployed now, go to the resource and the service is deployed. Now let's go back to our AI studio, cancel it, new index, we'll use the data in Azure AI studio. Select the data, next. Now if we'll drop down, we don't see that service. Click here. So now there are two services which are available. So this is for another project. So this is the one which we have created. Add a connection. So as soon as the connection is added, we can select the service, provide the name, provide the default name. And then the virtual machine, it requires on which virtual machine it should be running. So let's go for a decent size or version two. Next. And you can see it uses this text embedding ADA 002. So this will be deployed if it's not already deployed. It's not already deployed for us because we checked the deployment. There is only the GPT model which we have deployed. So go to the next and create vector index. You can test your data here or check the job details. So these two files are the data. So which is confirmed now and now it's allocating compute resource and you can check the job status here. If you'll click here, it will take you to ml.azure.com, which is machine learning studio. And if we'll go there in the jobs, you can see the job status. First, it'll create the chunk, then it'll update the ACS index and then register the vector indexing. And once this is done, all the data will be indexed. So now let's close this. Refresh it, what stage it's on. It's allocating compute resource. So let's go to the deployment. As you can see, the text embedding ADA is deployed now. So using this text embedding ADA, it will create the indexing using the Azure AI service. So let's go back to index, refresh, 
any other progress i'll pause the video now and we'll be back once all the steps are completed all the three steps are completed now first first the data is created into chunks then the ai search index is created and those index are registered now now let's go back to our azure ai service which we have created and click here go to the indexes and there is a index created purple garlic and let's open the document and find some information let's open the driving test when can you take the hazard perception test or just look for hazard perception test let's go here and search and it's searching and there is some information as you can see there is a information but it's not how we want it there is a lot of junk a lot of other information as you can see let's utilize this information so that it can be fed into our llm so let's go back to our prompt flow go to prompt flow and add the index lookup so let's name it as shy index 01 add and now now there will be multiple options for the index type will be available here so we want azure ai search and now we want a connection so this is the connection index name is the purple garlic content field will be the content we don't want embedding we don't want metadata and for semantic azure ml default let's save it and let's go to the queries input or topic so the query will be what we will ask which is the input here so instead of topic let's change it to query so let's change it to inputs dot query and the query type will be keyword query we'll type the keyword and the top k so top k means how many outputs it should provide so it will provide maximum of three outputs, which is enough for us. And we want the output. Let's name it as output only output to be output of the index. So we'll ask something in the input. It will do the index search using the AI search service and then output us the information. Let's save it. Let's ask the question. Look for it again. When can you take hazard perception test? So this is our query. Let's run it. Now it's running on the compute instance and soon will provide us an output. So it's running now as you can see and wait for it to finish. So it has provided the output. Let's click on the output expand the cells so it's providing a lot of information and it's providing the reference too from road to solo driving handbook at, at least it picked up the right handbook and now it's providing one information and another one and this is hazard perception test information and the third information so that means it's providing different text metadata additional fields so all these will come out now we want to feed this information into our LLM. So let's create an LLM. Here is the LLM option. Let's name it as Shalinder LLM 01 add. And we already have a connection available. So that's the one. It's a chat. Deployment name. GPT-4. Temperature 1 is fine. We are not providing any other information. And now we have to provide the system prompt as well as the user prompt. But the problem is because we have limited tokens, as you can see, we have only 8,000 tokens. And if we'll ask multiple questions, it will fill up pretty quickly. The output, which is coming from the search index, it's too much. There is a lot of information which we don't want here. So let's first filter out that information. So how can we do that using the Python? Save this, use the Python. Shall in the 
python add and in the prompt flow you have to import the tool and this is just converting the input which will provide the input string into string but I'll copy paste the code here so what it's doing is it's importing JSON then there is an input one which will be input here it will convert JSON output because the output which we are getting from the search index is JSON and we'll convert it into JSON itself because there are three different values which are coming. So we'll just get the text object and get the response here. So let's validate and pass. And now it will ask for the input. So it's asking the input. So the input will be output of the index. Now, as you can see here, first it's going to the index and then from the index it's coming to Python. But the output is taking the output directly from the index. So let's change that to So instead of the index output, let's take the output from the Python. And let's remove the LLM so that we can test this first. Let's remove this LLM. And now if you can see here, first is input, then it's going to index search, then to the Python and then to the output. And if we'll quickly check the output which came last time. So there is a text field which is required. Then there is a lot of metadata, a lot of additional field but we just want the text field. So now let's save this and run it again on the same input, which is it's running on the compute instance now and view the output. So this time, if I'll expand all the set, it's just providing the text information, which is one title, another title, and the third one. So as we set the top K as three, so it's providing us the three different information. So now we'll not add a lot of inputs, which is not required in the, in our LLM. So we'll save the tokens there. So now let's add the LLM. Shall in the LLM 01, add it. We already have a connection, chat it is. And the deployment is GPT-4. Now in the LLM, we need to provide the prompt. And the prompt here is system prompt is you are a helpful assistant. Of course it is. And you will provide a very concise answer based only, only that is very important from the information provided. So we need to provide the information and we are passing two inputs. One is information. Another one is question because LLM should know what the question is and should get the information from the index search or the Python filtering. Now, based on that information, it will provide us the output. So let's validate and pass. And information should come from the Python output. That's correct. And the question is directly coming from the inputs query. And let's change the output also. Now in the output, Instead of the Python output, we want the output from LLM. So if we look here, this is how it's designed. First, we provide the input. Input will go into index search. It will do the index search there. Then the Python will do the filtering. LLM will provide the smart output and we'll get the result. Let's save it. And run. So all the steps ran successfully. As you can see here, completed, completed, click on the view outputs and perfect. Now you are getting a very concise and correct output. You can take the hazard perception test when you are 17 years and 11 months old. Let's find more information. Let's go to any random page. So 
either a booster seat or an adult seat belt if you are 7 years to less than 16 years. Children under the 4 years must not be seated in the front seat. Let's ask this question. Close this. Go to the inputs. When can children sit in front seat? And perfect it is completed successfully let's click on the view outputs children under four years old must be seated in the front seat in the vehicles with two or more rows of seat children four or years so this is what we were looking for now let's open another document too we'll see whether it's getting the information from both the documents or just a single one okay yeah this looks good if contract is more than twelve thousand dollars the builder must have domestic building insurance when should you have domestic building insurance? Let's ask this question. When should you have domestic building insurance? Let's run. And this is the information what we were looking for. That's perfect. Now one last thing which I want to try is ask something random which is not in the documents. How does satellite works in space? Let's run this. First, there should not be any output from the index search because there is no index created for this data, satellite data. The Python will not filter anything. And finally, the LLM, which can answer this question, but we have a system message which limits its capability. So let's see what we get. The information provided does not contain any detail about how a satellite works in space. Perfect. So now our LLM is trained on our local data or the private data and only provides the information which is from that data. It's not using its own smartness or own intelligence. Though if we'll remove the system message, it will start providing you the answers. But we don't want that. We want this application to be an internal application. Like for an example, we have a lot of HR policies in an organization. So you can upload all those policies, then filter the information from those policies and then create a portal inside. Anyone can ask the questions. No need to go to the HR time to time and you can ask the questions directly. So now we have a working prompt flow. But this can only be used if someone logs into Azure AI Studio. But we don't want that. We can't provide access to all the users to use the prompt flow. So we need to make it more simple. So we'll go here. There is a deploy option. Let's deploy this application as an endpoint. So let's use the same name. I don't want to change anything. Virtual machine size. Let's change the instance count to one. Next, key based authentication system assigned managed identity. No changes there. Use of environment application insight. And then it's using the LLM connection, which is GPT-4. Review and create and create. Now this application is getting deployed into the virtual machine from where you will receive the endpoint. And you can use that endpoint in your application. So now you don't need this prompt flow. Prompt flow is already designed and packaged. So if you'll go to the deployment, soon it should show here. Right now there are only two, GPT-4 and Ada. But then there will be endpoint deployment too. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once it's done. So now if we'll go to the deployments, an endpoint is deployed now. As it's, you can see the state is succeeded. Click on that endpoint. So the prompt flow endpoint is deployed and it's in succeeded state. It has URI provided. And if you want to test it, you can test it from here. So, ask one question about the zip merging what is zip merging and test zip merging is when two lanes and the information is provided that's perfect now microsoft also provides how to consume this so this is the rest api endpoint these are the different keys which are here 
Now you can use the JavaScript, Python, C sharp. So the language which you like, you can use it and then, and then use this endpoint in your application. So in the visual studio, I'll use the Python web application. Let's open the VS code. So let's open a new folder. Let's create a new folder. Search project. I'll select this folder. This is a Python application. And in case of the Python, we should enable the virtual environment. So let's go to terminal, new terminal. So I'm in the search project, Python hyphen M V E N V. So it will create a virtual environment. And as you can see a folder with the name virtual environment is created and all the dependencies of the Python will be in that folder. It's done. Now let's activate it. V E N V activate. So it's activated now. Now let's create few files. First is app.py. So this is a Python file. Then I want to create one folder templates. And in the templates folder, I have to create index.html. So now let's, now I'll quickly copy the code. So there is an index file, which is a web page where it's showing, where it's showing a prompt and internal search web page. And another is the Python file, which is similar to how we consume this endpoint. And we need to provide some information here, which is the URL. So let's go and find the URL. This is the rest endpoint. Let's cop copy it here. Then the primary key. And don't worry about the key. I'll delete these resources before uploading the video. Let's save this. And now run python app.py. Now I'll run this application. Hopefully it should work. So let's install flask pip install flask. We are not deploying it into Azure web app. We are just creating a local web app. So we'll install it here flask. However, in the requirements.txt, you need to provide the details of flask application, which version you want to install so that automatically it will be installed before running the application. So let's run again python app.py. Perfect. Let's copy this URL. Run this. And perfect. It's showing us internal search web page. So now let's ask some question. What is the settlement period? Question mark. So it's not as quick as chat GPT, but it will provide you the answer. It has failed for some reason. So let me quickly check. As you can see, it's failing with this error. And the reason is I have provided a print so that I can check what's happening. So it's getting the output, but it's in the form of output, not in the form of result. So if I'll change it to output, save it and run it again. Let's open it. Refresh. What's the settlement period? And perfect. It's working. Let's quickly ask another question, which we have already tried. Can children sit in front seat? And perfect, it's providing the output the way we require. So now we have created a chat web application where users can just type in their input and get will get the required output. Because this is an internal application, this LLM is trained on the internal data, not on external data. So if you'll ask something else, it will not provide you answer for that. And it's just getting the information from the data which we provide through the index search. To summarize this video, First, I provided information on the architecture of Azure AI Studio, its components, different tools used. And then 
I created is mini project which uses the prompt flow, Python, LLM, AI search, which is AI index search, and then deployed the same application and created an endpoint. And using that endpoint, I created a Python web application. Now this Python app web application, which I'm not deploying in Azure, but you can deploy in the Azure app services and it will work for you. You can make it internal or an external web application. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.